Right, y'all already know what it is. Your boy Yako, what it do? The outlet to reality, the oldest podcast in Vegas and Chicago. What up? This is the place where you want to hide from your drama or maybe hide from your baby mama. Aha, just kidding. But, anyways, <laughs> fans, thank you for staying tuned. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Cha-ching! And today we have we have the best entrepreneurs ever. He's my brother. He's my homie. Give it up for Agassi Alejandro. What's up, brother? David, how you doing, man? I'm uh, I'm ple- it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, God bless. I thank you for having me this morning. And I am not one of the best entrepreneurs, but I appreciate the intro. Thank you, thank you, bro. Well, real quick, fans, so those who don't know this brother right here, I'm not gonna lie, we met. Really nice guy. Just just talking to him for a little bit in a car ride. I was like, man, this guy has a lot of knowledge. When I mean he has a lot of knowledge, he was sharing me stories. And I felt like felt he hit a lot of good points. And I was like, man, this is dope. This is a cool brother. So he was like, man, dude, let me, you know, let me cut your hair. I'm like, for real, you cut hair? He's like, yeah, bro. I don't know if you found a barber yet. But I got you. I'm like, okay, man, I'm a little picky. But, you know, I say I, I give you a chance. And one of the nicest thing, I'm not going to lie, I went to his house, right? This was yesterday. And I was kind of nervous, to be honest, because I've never, you know, going to a stranger's home. It's just, you know, I just, you know, I, I barely know him. So I was, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I didn't know if I was going to be cooked for dinner. Like, I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, just yeah. kidding. But I was just a little nervous and I got there and what broke the ice. This is the part like we drank wine together like brothers. Mm-hmm. And he was like, hey, you want a glass of wine? I got this really good one. It's good for the heart. And he was, he was giving me. And I was like, man, I really like, you know, the decoration, the white color. And we're sitting down. He's cutting my hair. We're chopping it up. And I was like, man, this, this is a cool brother. And, and I told him, look, man, I'm going to be honest, moving to Vegas. I've been missing like the Filipino brothers. Like I, I miss that here in Vegas. I have that back in Chicago, you know, they're my family, but he's missing that. Like I, I want to find more. And I think I found you, brother. Like it was meant to be. We were meant to, you know, meet up. So uh, what was your first impression when you met me, brother? My first impression when I met you, by the way, uh, before we get before I just want to respond to that you know uh to everyone out there who is listening to this and is getting to know me by the way I am uh I'm no more than you I'm just an entrepreneur I'm a guy that has big dreams and you'll get into we'll get into talking about later about like my barbering and, and my passions but I'm just a guy a humble guy with big dreams and entrepreneurial entrepreneurship and the entrepreneurial spirit is in me and I think that's what uh, d- connected David and I, and f- obviously God first and foremost is what connected us. But um, to answer your question, which was, tell me your question again. What was uh, my, your first impression of me? To answer your question, my first impression of him was, um, my first imp- impression of you, David, was you listen, you lock eyes with me and your intention is to look at me and hear me and understand me first. And uh, that's a compliment to you because I, I can sense that this guy is very internal and he probably listens to his own intuition because he's listening to mine. So that was my first impression was this guy is a listener. And whenever I have a listener in front of me, I can sense, and if I can sense that someone is like working on their self-development or they're working on themselves and they're trying to improve, then naturally I go into the mode of sharing what I've learned, what God has taught me and delivering that message to them. And once I'm done, then I have no problem shutting up and listening right back because that is a, uh, definitely a, a good habit that uh, I, I try to practice myself. So yeah, that's my first impression of you, bro. I like that, bro. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> so, so my fans, everybody's been waiting for those who don't know like i said this is agassi alejandro one of my brothers right here here now what my fans want to know to know a little bit more about you is tell us a little bit of where you're from what neighborhood you grew up in if you're a local from vegas and what's your hot hot okay so 
I am from I'm from Santa Maria, from Santa Maria, California, originally. Santa Maria, California is a uh, it's a central coast city in California, right in between L.A. and San Francisco, the midpoint. Uh, but it's an agricultural town uh, off of the coast just a little bit. But I'm from the central coast of California. Um, Vegas, what brought me to Vegas? Is that what you asked me? What, what brought me to Vegas? Yeah. Uh, so what brought me to Vegas was um, God brought me to Vegas. You know, I moved away from my hometown and um, I wasn't on the right path. And it, it reached a point where I needed to get closer to God and start my journey of, of like transforming all of my raw gifts and talents into something better. So that's what brought me there. Um, you asked me, you asked me um, hobbies. So yep. my hobbies, my hobbies, I wrote down, my hobbies are kind of like, they have become my habits. So when it comes to a word like hobby, I'm the type of person that if I like something, I'll dive all the way in. And if they become my habits because they be, just become things that I, I truly stand by, that I truly, quote unquote, rock with. And um, I dive in and, 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 and I allow myself to be consumed in a good way by those things. So my hobbies are, um, first and foremost, this but with old people. So my hobbies are listening to old people um, talk. So going a little bit back, back with my background, where I'm from, I'm a, yeah, I'm Filipino. You mentioned that um, when I was eight years old, my mom, she actually passed away. She became an angel in heaven at eight years old. And my father, who did not take it too well, ended up going into, you know, substance abuse, gambling, he became a compulsive gambler, didn't have the greatest background. By the way, his legacy is good with me. We're on really good terms. And all of that fueled me to be the man that I am today. But it resulted in my grandparents being the ones to come in and, 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 and raise me um, and have that presence. And by all means, my dad was gone from time to time, but he was still there. Still drove us to school, still was there. He was physically there, but, you know, mentally a little foggy, spiritually a little, uh, I guess you could say, tarnished. So the ones who actually guided me were my grandparents. And that led me to my number one hobby, which became a habit because I was raised by them. And so growing up from eight and until I'm 30 now, I was molded by listening to the older generation speak. And I don't know for the viewers out there who have listened to your grandparents, when your grandparents talk to you or older people who were not even your grandparents, maybe you don't even have grandparents, but with the way that are old, the older generation, you know, the generation older than our parents, they, the way they talk to us is totally different. And if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. There's a sense of like, I don't even care if you if you want to listen to me right now. I'm going to tell you this story. You know what I mean? Back in my day, that's why there's the back in my day. They tell you their experiences. And as a result, it humbles you and it makes your listening skills, the, the skills that you have, David, it, it, it tunes them up to where your wisdom, you got more room for wisdom. So that's my number one hobby. And then the other hobbies that I have are tied within my gifts that we'll get into later, which is um, styling. I love styling. So in the form of barbering, which is something that comes natural to me, which is, you know, barbering is, what, is part of what I do for a living. Um, fashion, um, being able to style my life outwardly. And I'll get into styling and, and what style is to me. Um, and words, you know, I, I, I believe, I truly believe that I, that my gift for styling, that I, I believe that I was given a gift of gab, they call it being able to have a way with words. And I often style my words, meaning, you know, it, whether it's journaling, having a, a little diary or, you know, wanting to, um, grow up in the nineties, I, I was a basketball player myself. So having a little bit of the hip hop influence, there'll be times where, man, that's a really good beat that, DJ Khaled, you know, put out that, you know, 
I don't listen to rap anymore, but if it's a tune that my little nephews are dancing to, I'm like, who did this? And then I'll just challenge myself to write a verse to that or, you know, 40, Drake. And this is just for the viewers to kind of connect with the viewers that still do listen to hip hop in that form. But um, yeah, those are my hobbies. Did I answer your question? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to pick at your brain just a little bit more. Please. So what was it that you said that you did that was your because you said something like I had to leave my my bad habits back yes. in Cali. What was that? Those dark, I guess, dark phases of your life that, that you were in. Cause I, I, I heard that and I was like, let me pick his brain just a little yes, bit. Yes, I yes, want to yes. know what was that? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. And, you know, I think it's a really good Avenue that we're going in this conversation because oftentimes when someone meets me for the first time, I've, my, I've got it my whole life. They'll judge me right away off of my look. Secondly, they'll judge me right away. Or our first impression is the energy that this person uh, gives off. So I don't want our viewers to think that, oh, this guy must have it all. I don't. Trust me. It's humble beginnings. And we're all humbly trying to move forward in our lives as well. So that is not the case. And I'll tie into us having that past or going down a dark path where we didn't have all of the answers. So uh, tapping into that that stage of my life where I was in my early 20s, this is my early 20s. I had, um, I went to college in San Francisco. So I moved to the city out of my small town, which is where I'm from. Some people, uh, most people don't leave that small town of, of, um, of Santa Maria. And uh, it got into a point where a thought came up earlier this morning, which is like, Sometimes you have to have big dreams to move out of a small town. And it's no disrespect to the people who have big dreams, who also have to have big dreams to have big dreams in a big city. You get what I'm saying? Like there's a, there's a level of overcoming that sense of comfort or what you see or what you're used to around your surroundings and then wanting to move. So that took me to San Francisco um, I lived with my um, with my brothers there. We were all in our kind of like college years. And it took me down a path where I was um, I wasn't around the right crowd. You know what I mean? There was a there was. To be transparent, I was around the crowd where, you know. Um, in San Francisco, I, I, I call it just I was like a in a way I was like a hippie for a year not in the sense of doing so much drugs. There was, it wasn't that, you know what I mean? I, I experienced a little bit of marijuana, which was legal back then and, and legal here now, but nothing past that. That wasn't, no, there wasn't any um, really deep vices or drugs that I was into or anything like that, but I was around that crowd. So some people can say you're around those people. So essentially that's your surroundings. And it showed with the lifestyle that I lived, the way that I treated women wasn't right at that time. The way that I treated myself, the way that I spoke to my, my, my family members, those grandparents that raised me, it, it, wasn't, a good, it wasn't a good space for me. And um, to tie it all, I wasn't close to the Lord at that time. I was very distant from the Lord. I always had the Lord in my heart, but I wasn't listening to my, my conscience, that, that voice that you have in your heart where God is telling you, hey, this is what you should be doing. I wasn't listening to that. I was purposely um, choosing to go down the other path, which is if you're not doing the, the virtuous path, if you're not doing the right thing, you must, you must be doing the wrong thing. And so that was... Um, that was the stage and the phase that I had in my life. At, and, and then now, after 10, 12 years of me just putting the Lord first, God first, or whatever you guys believe in, the, the, the galaxy or the universe first, it gave me a sense of peace, honesty, confidence within myself to be who I am now. And uh, having the blessing of speaking to you, brother. Thank you, bro. That was deep. That was deep. And I was going to ask you, was it? Um, um, not to go too much, but I, I feel like I, I want to hit something. Do you sure. feel you were in a dark place because you felt like you were missing something? 
Absolutely. You... Did you have more to your question? Please no, no, ask. No, 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 that's it. That was it. That was it. Yes, I was. Any time, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, right? And I'm just going to speak from the heart and what I, my my beliefs. And you know, um, please reach back out to David or myself and comment and ask and 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 then pick our brains, his brain, more importantly, because he's the one who's leading this con uh, this this podcast and this content into a really good direction right now. It was empty, bro. Um, I truly believe that if you're not in line with God, the Lord, universe, etc., you will be empty. You will be unhappy. There will be a void. There will be the sense of deceit within yourself because whether you're consciously, which is worse, or subconsciously, which is not knowing, going down the wrong path, it will never lead you to fulfillment, happiness, inner peace, confidence, um, true joy. You get what I'm saying? And, and, and love. It won't lead you to love. You know what I mean? If you if you hate yourself, you'll always. It'll never lead you to love. Wow, man! Does that answer I mean, your question? I, no, it does. It hundred percent does. I, I love it, but I I needed I needed to hear that. So I I was waiting for the and I got it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh man, I appreciate it. no, because a lot of young people right now, this day and age, they do feel trapped. Um, whether it's a toxic relationship and they don't feel like there's no way to get out. Sometimes it could be uh they're in debt and they owe a lot of money and they feel mm -hmm. like there's no hope. So they go into drinking, they go into drugs. Um, even young kids, even younger, that don't have a family, they don't have that feeling like they're part of something uh -huh. they end up going to gangs mm -hmm. you know because that has that brotherhood you know i got your back you know what i'm saying so i think it's very important for us to find something or find a way to bring us that inner peace and to you know the thing the secret to life is honestly is first um there's a there's an activity or something that will get you that, that center piece. You know, for mm -hmm. me, it's running. When I run, I feel like flash. I forget all my problems and I run it. If it's with anger, sadness, whatever, I run it. And I, I always, when I finish my run, I always thank God. I always say, you know, thank you for allowing me to run and for allowing me to make it to the end point where I want it mm -hmm. because without you, I'm nothing, you know? And, and mm -hmm. it, it really makes me be grateful everywhere I walk after my run. I'm like grateful that I can walk. I'm grateful that I can see the trees, the grass. I start changing my mindset, but if I don't run and I keep that energy and locked, it just destroys my whole day. I can ruin someone's day. So I have to find a way to escape. But at the same time, bring me back to to David. Don't mm. don't get back to that. You know whatever you know is going on. You know I ain't, you know what I'm saying the negativity. There you go. The Got negativity. It. So I, mm. I really appreciate, brother, your your feedback, and I think this is nice for a lot of young people to hear. Now I want to ask you something, right? Because for my fans out there who don't know, my brother right here, he cut really good hair. As you can see, I'm looking for you. Nine, you know what I'm saying? So, uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, thank you, brother. Thank you, thank, thank you, actually. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I want to ask you something. What, when did you realize that you were good at cutting hair and what age you started and how long has it been? What's your journey? Kind of give me your little journey. Okay. So, uh I'll tie in a couple of interesting things that you said in your in your response into my into my uh, my my answer. So you kind of you're asking me, you know, when did I know what got me into this 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 gift or what I'm doing right now with my life? And um, I'll tie it into what you were mentioning earlier. I noticed that when you uh, uh, I'm going to come at you now. So I noticed that when you said the secret to life is you looked up. And you open your eyes and then you said it's doing something right 
And I truly believe when I was watching you, when you, you open your eyes, because honestly, the secrets of life, there's so many, there's so many uh, secrets and there's so many things that you can do to, like you said, find that joy and, and do something. So I, I respect the fact that you open your eyes and you know, you, you can, you subconsciously showed us viewers and people listening into this conversation that it's greater, you know, and then you chose to do something which is in line with your gift, which is my answer to you now. So that secret to life that you were talking about is it's being connected spiritually. I truly believe that finding uh, uh, that joy, peace and happiness and love that we're talking about to those viewers. And, and by all means, to those viewers, you brought up like gangs, Santa Maria, the year that I, Santa Maria, California is gangland. For those of you that don't know the Southern California gang, uh, influence and you know ms and and other gangs and crips and bloods there's a, a big influence there so to the viewers that that um live with that trust me uh i was around it you know what i mean cortezes dickies crips shaved heads tattoos pit bulls being walked around like i know i'm from there i just happened to be that athlete uh, and Deion Sanders, Deion Sanders posted this. He's a he's a coach for a college team. He was like, you know, athletes aren't gangsters and gangsters aren't athletes. And in our communities, the gangsters and those that were wise enough that that were in, involved in that, they pushed the athletes to say, hey, man, you have something. You have this gift that we're about to talk to about right now. Uh, so we'll protect you. We'll keep you safe, but go ahead and be that light because this is what God gave you. And for you, David, it's, it's running, you know, uh, for me, I knew early on that my gift is style, uh, whether I style my words a certain way or whether I style your hair a certain way, or whether I style, um, my outfits in a certain way, I knew that it came uh, natural to me. And people might be asking, what is my gift? How do I know? You know, Agassi, uh, you got barbering, uh, or you say you, you pronounce it Agassi. I love the way you pronounce it because my family who's Filipino has that accent. So I, both I'm good with, but you know, what's my gift to the viewers or anybody who's listening? I truly believe, and I got this from, uh, uh Steve Harvey. He says, your gift is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. And I truly believe the same way he believes is, is that, that God gives every one of us a gift. You know, what is it for, for you? What, what's something that you do so easily that your loved ones or your circle around you say, hey man, that's pretty, that's really, really good. You should, whenever they say, you know, you should, you should be baking pies or you, you should be doing a podcast, bro that's in line with your gift. I truly believe it. So for me, it just came natural. Uh, entrepreneurship is tied to my, to my dream. And with the barbering, I started when I was 12, going on 13 years old, first and foremost, naturally there's God will guide you. So my mom, I have three boys in our family and then there's one little girl. So my mom would learned how to cut our hair, which is an entrepreneurial thing. How can I solve a problem? Right. Because she wanted to save money on, she wanted us to look nice every week for church. But, you know, at that stage, I come from humble beginnings, man, you know, immigrant family, $20 times three per week, that's 60 times, you know what I mean? Times four, that's like a, a, a hundred. You get what I'm saying? That's like a, a 60, 60, that's like a thousand dollars a month just on haircuts. If I'm doing the math correctly, right? 60 yeah. per week times four. Yeah. Um, times four. That's like, no, 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 excuse me. I'm so sorry. 240 a month. Ooh. That wasn't cutting it. So she learned how to, she learned how to cut hair on her own. And then when my eldest brother was, learned how to, um, was old enough to kind of learn how to cut hair, she would cut his hair and he would cut our hair. And then my brothers became my mentors as I got older. So by that time, I was like molded, like MJ with the two older brothers. You know what I mean? I was, there was a competitive spirit about me, but more like a growth mindset about me to where I wanted to take this natural gift, this, this what I'm seeing, and apply my natural gifts to it. 
to the point where it, become, it, became, it became, I'm a barber. And my brother's actually a barber in, in the Bay Area. And my eldest brother still cuts hair. But he was the oldest brother that didn't need it to take it on in life because he was getting haircuts by his two little brothers. So um, cutting hair was my gift at, a, at an early age. And then the entrepreneurship was... By the time I was in middle school, I was already cutting my, my, my basketball teammates' hair. So that seventh and eighth grade, I was already lining them up. That's how I started. And then by the time high school came in, it just amplified it. So I ended up playing basketball in, in high school. So I would cut the freshman team's hair. And then the sophomores, I, I cut a couple of them. But then my brother was an upperclassman, so he would cut them. So I would cut, you know, the, the freshman soccer team and then the, 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 the football team. And then I was just doing it naturally. I was cutting the community, the people that would walk around the neighborhood. Hey man, you cut hair, bro. You know what I mean? And then it came, that's how it works. So a long winded version of, of, of saying that barbering is just a gift of mine. I love that. And do you feel that because you actually communicate to your clients that it makes the experience more effective, like memorable? 100%. Uh, I'm not the best barber on the planet. Barbering is not, it's, barbering is not my gift. There's people who are way better than me that are gifted with barbering. They were born to do it. They got it tatted on themselves somewhere. You know, styling is my gift. So that styling goes into different avenues. So I've been a stylist in fashion. Right. I, I've been a stylist in hair, um, but my oh, another one of my gifts, I truly believe, is that it, it's love. I've always had a big heart and a big mind. And I've always anytime I had someone's presence in front of me, I'm trying to extract all of the value that I can that's in line with the spiritual, the, the love, peace, happiness, the virtues. You know what I mean? The diligence, the the patience, the. You know what I'm saying? The, the chastity, you know what I mean? The liberality, all of those seven virtues and all of the other great things about spirituality and just our true human selves. I just try to maximize the time that I have with them because it goes back to with my with my parents. With my grandparents, my mom passed away. It taught me life is short. If I could have only my mom for eight years. And my grandparents are raising me. I can tell they're, you know, they're they're headed down. They don't have too much time either. And then my dad, with the vices in his life, I, I I didn't know. You know, time was something that naturally, I just always tried to maximize because you know God. That's how God molded me. That that's what He did in my life to strengthen me. So my views on time, with that pushed me. So yeah, if I have somebody in the chair for 30 minutes, I, I'm going to maximize that time. And if they have more time to give, oftentimes, as, as we experienced yesterday, when I cut your hair, the 30 minutes is the hair cutting part. I'm, I'm listening while I'm cutting. And then there's about 10, 15. If you have more enough time, another 30 minutes of just connecting deeply, because I don't know when I'm going to see you again. You get what I'm saying? I, not every client or first time customer or friend, it has a podcast for us to continue the relationship. So in that short amount of time, I'm going to maximize. I like that. I like that. That's, that's deep brother. And when it comes down to styling, right? So what's mm -hmm. your big take? Cause I get a lot of young people, they're trying to, you know, figure out what they're going to wear for the day or what they're going to wear, you know, to go yeah. out. Yeah. 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 You're fresh. I mean, you looking better than me. I ain't gonna lie. You know, I look like a guy with a white tee. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I just no man. I just got a, <laughs> I got a tank top underneath. You know what I mean? Well, you bringing back that '90s look, like you looking fresh. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So, well, so thank you. Anytime, bro. So, what's your what's what's your your thought process for styling? What like what should our young people wear that you feel in your your eyes is the look? We you know we gotta like what's your intake? Meaning. I truly believe that the most stylish people, and this is not just going to be uh, shallow with style and fashion. I truly believe that the most stylish individuals or the best designers um, 
they have so much meaning in the message that they're trying to say, to, to express. Meaning is the number one thing. Before I enter, get into my answer, the reason why I'm wearing this is because I, I felt like today was going to be a very, very, uh, this is an opportunity. I got to maximize it. But this jacket that I'm wearing, uh, I'll tie into my response with meaning. This is the jacket. I lost my dad uh, during the time of COVID in 2020. So he passed away. This jacket was the last jacket that um, this is my dad was literally wearing this the last time that I saw him. It, me, it has so much meaning to it. It has so much meaning to me. This is literally the last thing he was wearing. And I gifted it to him. So he put it on and he left. He, he was visiting Vegas. I said, Dad, I want you to have this jacket. He put it on and left. At the time, it didn't have this patch, these buttons, and this other patch that on the shoulder. At the time, it only had this one patch on it. Let me go further deeper into meaning. When he, when he, when he passed away, this patch that you see, this is a patch that I took from a pair of his Levi's pants when he was still alive. This is in the inner lining of his pants. So I took that patch and I put it on the jacket that, that he was last wearing that I, that I uh, saw him in. When he died, I wanted to experience and believe in him. So I took a job. Entrepreneurship are like, entrepreneurs are like, what? You took a job? Yes. I didn't do this out of income. This was all pure love and wanting to keep the presence of my father and I's favorite brand, uh, which is Levi's. Um, and I, I was like, I need to be a stylist for Levi's. So I became a stylist for Levi's. And while I was working there, if you look at this patch, this was a button that was hanging around in the, uh, in the back room of, uh, of the Levi's shop. And if you know Levi's and, you know, 501 is like their iconic. This is what they are known for is the, is the, is the 501, the Levi's 501. It's historic. That's a whole nother venue. That's a whole nother avenue that, that you can go down. But my pop and I, we love the 501. That was, you know, an immigrant story with him was like the, it, the 501 was tied to his American dream. Like, you know, they, they were 501s in, in the U.S. So when he was a young man, 30, the age that I am now, he tied to his dream. And so me growing up, he was always, he would always say, oh, those 501s, those 501s. And I'm like, man, pop, 501s are, they're baggy. They're, they're not stylish. They're not trendy. And I'll get into that avenue for the young kids right now. I'm like, those ain't it. But when he got, when I got closer to the Lord, when I got closer to him, when I got closer to knowing who I am as a human being, 501 is all I wear. To the young people, who are trying to find themselves, I would say a trend is not where it's at. Why is it that trends are so cyclical? Because there's no meaning. Let me get, let me get deeper into that. The reason why we can easily jump on and jump off of a trend is because there's no meaning behind it that truly defines who you are in terms of style. Now, look at the designers who, if you're going to take, if you're going to take fashion all the way up, there's designers. So designers are the people who actually make the clothes and actually in a way manipulate their own, so quote unquote, look into the fashion. Then they share it with the fashion world and people fall in love with it and they find their own meanings to the brands. Ralph Lauren's look has never changed. Because his sense of self and his sense of meaning behind his clothing and his aesthetic has never changed. That boy, Rick Owens, his look, his, the meaning behind his uh, design, there's a, there's a connection. A lot, all of them look so similar because there's that meaning and this, there's that voice inside of him, that sense of self that he's just portraying. And it, 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 it modifies to the to what people like in, in in certain generations but it doesn't change look at look at and for the younger viewers let me go to someone who's who, who everyone probably sees now look at kanye west his sense of loungy cropped uh earth tone vibes it, it hasn't changed and if you want to talk about meaning like look at now i believe his album is called donda it's the me 
if there's not meaning in the name of your dead mother, I don't know what is. You get what I'm trying to say? And he, you hear him speak so loudly about like, I, I was taught by my mom to believe in myself. It's all about self. There's a inner self, self-love that he's trying to express with the world. So to the younger crowd, I would say, what, what means a lot to you? And then work it from there. This jacket that I'm wearing, I, I love this jacket. This is a sense of who I am because my father, I have so much love for my father. You get what I mean? And I'm not going to point the camera down because uh, you know what I mean? But like the pants that I'm wearing were the, actually I'll show you. These pants that I'm wearing right now, it's a pair of Levi's 501s. Camel. I would have never bought these pants. Now look at these pants. I would have never bought those pants, these pants ever. Right. But they mean so much to me now because these were literally what my father was wearing when I last saw him. So he was literally wearing this outfit that I'm wearing. They mean so much to me and I wear them constantly. They're in, they're in my, my daily, weekly, monthly cycle, even to the Doc Martens. You know what I mean? Uh, I got married in a pair of Docs. And, and, and when my dad, when my, my fa father passed away, I bought a pair of Docs. Oh, no, no, no. Excuse me. I bought a pair of Docs. Uh, right before my father passed away. And when he did pass away, I literally wore them for like a whole year. And I only have like three to four shoes, three, three solid shoes in my everyday cycle because each one of them means something to me. The Doc Martin, my father, the Nike Cortez, Santa Maria, California, the gang, you know what I mean? The, my, my, my surroundings, that's a, a piece of home to me. Um, and a pair of, uh, a pair of Jordans, you know what I mean? That, you know, grew up in the nineties basketball player, my father, you know what I mean? Like that is a sense of like, of what defines me. I'm not buying new shoes. I'm not buying new pants, new shirts, new tops, every trend, because I don't need to, because they have so much meaning in my expression, in my message, in the form of style that no trend will waver that. I like that. No, that's deep, brother. That's really true. I I've actually never yes. seen fashion like that. That's very interesting because um we get so caught up with man, I gotta look like everybody with the little the little um little bag right here. I forgot what they're called, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And I'm like a little pouch. There you go, a little pouch. Yeah, right the here. satchel or pouch or or you know, there's different names for it. Man, man purse or you know what i mean there's all funny names but i get i get what you're saying and, and for me growing up man like i i just i never i never wore nothing like that and it just doesn't fit my style like it's just for me it just doesn't click and now everybody's doing it mm -hmm. like a trend and they kind of look goofy. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? But everyone tweets his own. You know, if you want to look like, you know, everybody else, go ahead and look like everybody else. But I, I feel like I don't need it. The only thing I wear that's like a pouch is the thing that you run with that you could fit a water bottle. That's it. When it's hot uh -huh. outside, because uh -huh, uh -huh. you, know, you could pass out. So I need to make sure I got water. But that's the only time you'll ever see me. But it doesn't go like this. It goes in my belt. You know, it looks like those grandpas that be wearing those little pouches. That's the only time you see me wear. But I would <laughs> okay. never wear that to go out and see a girl. I'd be like, hey, baby girl, let me get, let me get what I wait, 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 Let me see what I got in my phone. Well, well, <laughs> well, they, well, well, well David, you know, I, in defense and fairness to everybody else, when it comes to something like, you know, meaning and fashion, it's super broad. So, you know, if, you know, fashion, like, like personalities, like people, it's super diverse. So, um, when it comes to things like trends and stuff, I, I just look at it as this people just finding themselves. It's okay to experiment the same way we, the same way that we experiment with, with um, trying new things in life, food, art, music, you know what I mean? Uh, people, places. So it's super diverse. So yes, I, although you and I are, or I, I will admit I have, I have one, I bought one in Japan, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a, um, um a souvenir i put on my camera my uh my actually my wife puts her camera in it and that has become like our our camera bag so 
I'm open. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't want people, I don't want the younger crowd to be like, hey, man, you hating on my bag. You hating on my bag, David. You hating on my, my man purse. You hating on my, you know what I mean? So I'm sure you guys get the message that like, David I like and I are trying to say. Yeah. Right, right. I appreciate that, brother. Now I want to do a little trivia game. I'm going to have a little trivia game. A little, uh, not a game, a, a little trivia question. That's what I meant. Sure, to say. sure, sure. So, brother, dun, dun, dun. The biggest question that everybody wants to know is, do you believe in ghosts? Yes. Have you ever seen a ghost? Or yes. You, tell us your little experience and I'll tell you mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I've been I've been I've been talking a lot. Uh, in my responses and uh, with respects to everybody's time was listening out there. So I want to listen right now because it's trivia and it's this bonus question that you got. So please tell me, I'm interested to hear this. Uh, what's your experience with ghosts? So I'm going to be honest with y'all. Um, I used to ask my spiritual leader a lot. Why is that when I get home after watching a scary movie, why is that I, I, I get trouble sleeping, right? Like, I get scared. Like, it's still, like, it kind of, like, follows me back home. home. And so what he said was that every time you watch a scary movie, it opens a dimension to your reality. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that. I was like, bro, for real? But I love scary movies. Like, he don't understand. I love scary movies. He's like, I ain't mm -hmm. going to stop you. But if you see something touching your hair, just know... Uh, the grudge is back. Yes. <laughs> so I got scared, man. And I'm going to be honest. There was a time where I'm not lying. This is real, real story. So my mom, my mom has a big heart. A lot of people don't know this, but my mom adopted to my home. She adopted a, a, a friend of mine who didn't have a home to live at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, they became like my siblings. And one of the brothers that moved into me, it moved into my home, he told me that his gift was seeing ghosts. He didn't tell me until a couple months after we lived together. Mm -hmm. And so that me, my sister, and him, and he's telling us this, right? And he's like, I don't know how to tell you this, brother. He's crying. He's crying. He's like, there's a ghost behind you. <laughs> my whole hair, my whole hair <laughs> went up. You know, when you feel it, my even <laughs> hair was staticky. Like, I didn't have my hair up, and my hair was flying up. And I was scared. I was like, oh, snap. Is it, like, t tickling me, or what's going on, man? He goes, man, it's, it's, she was ugly. <laughs> he said, she was ugly. <laughs> and so he was scared. And so my sister got scared, too. And so watch this. A couple weeks later, my guy tells me, hey, bro, um, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I just had a dream. I said, what's your dream, brother? He goes, well, I had a dream that this little girl, she pretty much, um, I was like at this church, but it was like everything was like destroyed. And this church, she was wearing this red, red dress. No, she was a white gown, kind of white address mm. but she had blood like on her eyes and then like it went away and then she was just there right i'm like man that's kind of weird but he's like girl that's been following me she was there too because he was telling me a story too when he was young that one of his i don't know if his father or, or mom somebody in his family got shot in front of him as a kid and he said that there was a little girl right there next to him and he didn't get hurt from the bullet. And so it was crazy. I was like, man, that's a weird, like, it was a lot of stuff. I was like, man, it's a lot to take in, brother. I'm only 13. I don't know if I can take this, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. my sister, check this out. My sister would babysit, right? She came home one day with the twins. There's two girls that she, she, um, she took care of. And she came home one day. You're not going to believe this. She was walking with the girls. And the little girl says, the twins, there's a girl in the red dress in the bathroom. 
who's that? And my sister went to see, and it's like, she got scared. She was there, and she freaked out. She ran, because there's no little girl that has red or, or white, I'm sorry, white dress. She ran <laughs> with the twins outside the house. She called me. I was in school. She called me, and she's like, David, I need you right now. There's a freaking ghost in the house, and she has a, a white dress, small and the twins told me where she was at and i'm freaking out because it's a ghost because the moment i saw her and i ran she disappeared and i ran outside and i'm crying she's crying on the phone with me she's crying and i'm like oh snap so i i told the principal look i gotta go man like i don't know how you're not gonna believe at the time you need a parent so i had one of my cousins come to to take me out of school and i actually went out and i ran i took the bus i got back home my my sister was still crying in the porch with the twins she was just freaking out and um i came in and uh she took them to mcdonald's right so they can eat something and you know of course people don't think she she left them there you know she she also like took care of them but she came back waiting for me so when I came back, she was still like her eyes, you know, when girls put makeup and like their eyes look kind of like black and like it's just, yeah, 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 yeah. It gets a little sloppy right there. So uh -huh. I could tell she was really like, you know, scared. And I told her what happened. She told me the whole story. And then I told her, hey, did my boy ever told you, the guy that lived with us, my brother, did he ever tell you about his dreams or anything? Or no, nah, he never. So it was weird because the way she described that little girl was the exact same little girl that was following my friend. And so I was kind of scared. And my dad always taught me this. He said, be careful of the people you bring to your home because they can bring baggages or they can bring spirits, depending who they are. And I was so shocked. So luckily, my guy only stayed with us for a year and a half. He finally got his own place together, got his stuff together, and uh, was able to get a home. And we didn't have no, we didn't have any other ghost interactions after that. I'm gonna be honest with you, but it's so true, and that's like the realest story I can share. Um, till this day, man, that little girl still haunts me. I haven't seen her no more. I mean, I'm in Vegas now, so I'm sorry, girl. I'm, I'm far away, but yeah, but brother, I want to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I want to uh, hear your story. I want to hear your, yours. Spill the beans. Okay. Well, um, I guess I'll just give a, uh, an open response to this. I, I'm not trying to take it to, you know, paranormal activity. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, I just, I just respond in terms of, you know, why I, I believe in ghosts or just that spiritual realm is, you know, being, being someone who daily tries to get closer and closer to the Lord. I mean, just let's have an open mind about it, right? If you believe that, you know, God is a uh, Holy Spirit, or if you believe that the universe is some, you know, a supreme being that's not a physical form like a human being, then it, if, if God is a spirit, then there has to be, you know, spirits. So that's just a general question as to why. And I obviously, you know, I do believe that there's a certain realm, you know what I mean? Heaven is not on earth and earth is not in heaven. Although you try to do your best to have heaven on earth, you know, but it just makes sense that there's going to be humans that are alive and then spirits or souls or ghosts in this case that are not alive in the human body. So um, I think that's a pretty neutral, but open response. Would you, wouldn't you say? No, 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 it is. It is. And, and, but you, you never encounter one. You don't have a story. <laughs> he just, that's he just, by, that's he just a, bypassed my my whole. I'm not sorry. trying to go into it. I'm sorry, but I had to. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. 
Well, you know, well, I will say that this is uh, crazy, uh, and I will answer your question. And it's so, it's so, so crazy um, because my one encounter or one of, I guess you could say, no, no, my, I've had two encounters, and one of the, the main one that stands out the most is a little girl in a white dress. <laughs> you know I, hate that you're I swear me. i swear to you i swear okay, to you tell brother. me tell me you gotta tell me more because i gotta hear this <laughs> okay maybe she came over she came over bro. <laughs> no i'm not gonna go i'm not gonna go down i'm not gonna go down that path i'm not gonna go down that path bro um it was it happened when i was younger and um i truly believe that like the you said your your little you said the little twins. So I, I just shared with this. I truly believe that like when you're under a certain age, there's this level of like, you know, innocence or purity that little boys and girls have. I guess you could say they're more open to that realm because they're, they're, they're pure. They, they don't know. Um, their, 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 their spirituality is, is, is at a different stage, at an early but open stage than us adults who have experienced more, learned more, you've been on earth longer, etc. And so I think that um, the younger generation or, or younger, the younger kids and, and little babies and, and, and stuff like that. And myself, when I was, I think I was like six years old or seven years old, um, between five and seven. When I experienced it, ever since that, I haven't seen a ghost. It's not like I'm not, uh, you know what I mean? I'm not someone who um, has that gift, but uh, it happened when I was younger. It was a little girl in a white dress and um, it was a very, it was a very, um, it wasn't like a dreadful, fearful, scary movie type of experience and feeling. It was more of a, a peaceful, open um, curiosity type of experience with me. So it was a, it was a good experience in that sense. Yeah. Wow. But no, that's good. That's good. I, I mean, maybe it's, it could be a, uh, like a guardian angel too. You never know, like something positive, you know, cause it didn't mm -hmm. scare you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. scare it, you. it felt it, it, that's that category is what it felt like for sure. Wow. Um, yeah, no, that's amazing. One thing I wanted to uh, share a little bit, too, my, my spiritual leader told me something that I think would shock a lot of, of my fans and a lot of people. I don't think I've ever shared this. So he said that, and I honestly believe this. I'm going to be honest 100%. Maybe a lot of people disagree, but I don't believe now anybody can talk to God, my opinion. I think that we do get a spiritual... Um, revelation maybe through a friend maybe through somebody or through a prayer we just feel connection but i don't feel like god speaks speaks to us like the way we're speaking like this mm. like god himself like you say a spiritual being right mm. one thing i can say that he said that really shocked me and it's a little spooky but i'm gonna share it he said back then we used to have prophets communicate to give us that like connection to God. So, mm -hmm. Prophets will come and say, this is what's going to happen in the future. Kind of like the Oracle, like they'll, they'll predict the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is what's going to happen. Right. It was like a way to cheat to, to the, to, to the heavens or, or to the, you know, the yeah. higher ups. And he's like, now we don't have that, but our, our new connections are, I was like, who he us, it's, children or are, are stuck in the rehab habitation like the mental institute my bad the like in, like in the like in the in the spectrum spectrum like the ones mm -hmm. that like, he said and a drunk person and he gives us he gives an example if a children said i saw an angel would you believe him her no and if a drunk person said i saw an angel would you believe him no so he said that According to his studies and what he's taught, and this is from the Jewish faith that he was sharing, that those are the only three only particular people in that perspective that actually can uh, talk to God in a whole different level. 
because no one believes them. They think they're crazy, but they're not. They're in the in the way children, he was saying children have no um their imagination is so big, they don't have like they don't have to worry about bills. They're not in the in the state of like, oh, um, I gotta worry about you know the school thing. They're not in that level, they're they're very open. So it's mm-hmm. easy to teach them because they're like a sponge, they're brand new. And it's crazy. I'm what I'm sharing you right now, it's a very old teachings in the in the Jewish faith. Ten people, I'm not talking bad about anybody who has uh mental any mental disorder. I'm just saying yeah, that ain't the energy. Gift. Yeah, that's yeah. not your, that's not the energy you're coming with. Right, right. Sure. I'm just saying you you a special gift behind it being spiritual. That's what I'm trying to say. So what was crazy is that. In Paranova Activity, the first movie that came out, the guy that was scared because he had, um, he, I don't know if you saw the movie, but he played the Ouija boy, right? Mm-hmm. He actually goes sees a, a professor who studies uh, witchcraft, um, studies, studies uh, astrologies, all that stuff. That was his specialty. So he went to a professor and the professor told him, um, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, he said the almost the exact same thing. He's like, children can see other dimensions. They can encounter spirits. And I thought that was my favorite part of the, of the movie because it was something that my spiritual leader shared with me about what I just shared, just, you know? Mm-hmm. And I thought that was kind of cool. I was like, man, I'm, I just learned it. And now I saw it in the movie. I thought that was pretty cool. And even even if you get to like going more in the Bible, if you see when Jesus encounters um, the people, he always says, listen to the children. You, there's a mm-hmm. part of listen, listen to the children. You know, they bring I forgot what he said. They bring something. And a lot of people in the olden days and ancient times, he's said listen to to children there's a story i'm gonna share one more story because i know i'm going a little bit there's a story of kings a king and the queen right Mm. and the king just got married so at the ceremony at this village at this or this country Mm -hmm. uh the child i mean the king came walking everybody's cheering and he was like i have the best outfit of the day okay (laughs) And everybody's, yeah, he got the, oh, man, I love it. It's amazing. Polo in the back is like, why are y'all clapping for this guy if he has no clothes on? And he was the only one that stood out. And he saw that. But everyone else were scared to say something to the king. So they play along with it. Like, oh, yeah, you know. But the kid saw, yo, he's He's butt naked, <laughs> he ain't looking fresh. <laughs> Somebody put some clothes on him, you know what I'm saying? Uh huh. That's what I mean. You know, there's things that they can see, and that's why I'm gonna tell you something. I don't know if you heard the saying, right? With with people that are drunk, there's a saying that our 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 and a lot of Hispanic cultures we say, when you're drunk, you tell the truth, because right now you don't you don't have filters. To, to hold you back. You're like, you're locked up. You, you have no control. You're like, mm-hmm. you're just like spilling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a little crazy, man. I don't know why I got a little tangent, but I, I, I just felt uh, inspired to share some stuff, you know, a little, you know, okay. little stuff. But to my boy right here, my brother. So I have a little challenge for you, brother, because you know I do TikTok. <laughs> Before the challenge, brother, before okay. the challenge, I want to I want to tie everything that you said um, okay. and I want to go with the avenue of highlighting all of that. But on a, on, a, on a really interesting level as well. So you mentioned about how there were prophets. Right. Um, and I wanted to talk about like the ancient times and, and bring this into with how, you know, how back in the, in the older times, there used to be kings and queens and, you know, royalty and castles. And that's how civilization was um, handled. They got that from heaven because 
obviously for those that believe or just in the general standard faith that you'll know that like God is a king in heaven, right? You know what I mean? Son. And then, so they got that from there. But going to the whole prophet thing, did you know that in the ancient times, in the early, early times, kings, their number one advisor was a prophet. So the prophet would help send the word, share the word of what God wanted, and the king would act in his kingdom based off of what God wanted. I truly believe that we've there. If you now, if you look fast forward to now, we don't have kings anymore because I truly believe that too much of the king not following the Lord and choosing to do what he wanted to do, the other side of men in power, greed, envy, you know, doing things that they wanted to do, would I guess you could say burn the kingdom and allow for that infrastructure to not work anymore because it was designed originally to have God being the one to guide the king through a prophet. But if you, if you're a human being who doesn't listen to the Lord and you do what you want to do, then of course the money and power and corruption, which is a lot like what we see nowadays will take over and it will, it will throw out the original design of how, you know, on earth as it is in heaven. Look around. Do you see a lot of kings on a throne with the queen and then there's a prophet? No. Why? Because, of course, the other side probably might have taken over. And to does that make sense so far? Yeah. Yeah. Ain't Ain't that so interesting? Putting God first is super important, brother. And. I'm, I, if there's anything that I want to share with our viewers, that's it, that's it. Is having a uh, and whether you believe in, in, in the Lord or not, having a, a spiritual connection to something that is greater and bigger than yourself is required to have that happiness, love, passion, and it's it's the only outlet to reality. You get what I'm saying? Because honestly, if a reality is man-made dictated by society it's not the true reality the true reality is comes from the creator or the universe and what i wanted to share about with the with the children i can see why the your spiritual leader which is an interesting term i like that term i can see why your spiritual leader would say that children um, drunk people or those that are um, uh, in the spectrum have access to that realm uh, for the children, I think it's because they're a lot closer to that realm. You get what I mean? They're, they're fresh. They've only been on earth for a little bit, for a little while. So it, it makes sense. The Those that are in the spectrum um I can see how they are a little bit closer or they have an avenue to be connected to the creator, a.k.a. universe, is because they were built that way. They they obviously don't function off off of the, uh, in the same ways that we do. I'll put it in this way. Why is it that an autistic person can just see, can fly in the helicopter and look at New York City and then be able to draw it exactly how you see it in in his eyes or how he saw it in his eyes or how you see it through the camera that's following him from behind. Why are they able to do that? Only God knows, right? To the question, to the one about the the alcohol. And I'm just I'm just speaking to this open. I could be wrong. I'm, I, I don't have all of the answers. This is just me being having an open mind. That's another virtue is liberality. It's just being open to other people's ideas and opinions, right? With the drunk person, that one, I believe that. So I'll start it off with this. Why do they call alcohol spirits? Oh, that's a they, good one. No, I didn't think about right? that. Alcohol spirits, yeah. So they call them spirits, right? So. I believe that, yes, maybe the alcohol, um, the alcohol can get you 
closer to that realm can open up that realm to you because you kind of break down the barriers of the human, you know, the society. But I truly believe that when you reach that point, you can go good or bad. I don't think that every drunk person uh, has, you know, quote unquote God or the goodness in them. The uh, By you opening, I think it, it only takes you to that realm. So with alcohol, you're open to the realm. And then the good side or the bad side has an opportunity to have some control on you, especially if you allow it to go down that path if you're drinking with those intentions, et cetera. Um, Cause I, you know, I've had really, really good experiences of um, having wine the same way that we had wine yesterday, having wine or those spirits with people who um, are super close to the spiritual world, God. And we had great times and our emotions and the feelings that we were, we were feeling were super peaceful and happy and joyous. And there was no negative or malice or evil intent. And I've experienced um, having wine and spirits with some people to where I'm my intention is to have that with them but the energy that I'm receiving from the other people around me because they weren't trying to give that out was their eyebrows are a little bit tilted their their the words were coming from a sense of this is not good and they were saying things that I've never ever heard them say in uh sober times and it was super negative and super like, whoa, this is not right. So it's both. I wouldn't say that all drunk people, you know, have the Lord in them. But um, to, to kind of like share about those three with the children, the those in the spectrum, I can see why. I'm not I don't have all the answers, but, you know, I can see why. But anyway, you were going to ask me a question, a question, um, uh, a bonus question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. You know, brother, I've been doing TikTok for a minute, mm -hmm. and uh, and I know you haven't started yet. So my biggest TikTok challenge for you, for you, is you know putting a video out. And I think now, from the knowledge that you just gave me, uh -huh. I think you should put a video of you, uh, explaining of you going out and how you were telling me, like in the video, in the short clip, why is this stylish, and okay. then like the symbol behind it. You know what I'm saying? That would be the dopest, I think, the coolest video. Because now you just got me with that jacket. You might have to wear the jacket. I'm going to be honest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, you know, you wear it. And then, like, you leave the, the audience or the fans to comment their thoughts. And next you know it might become a trend. People are going to start wearing stuff that means something to them. Not because it's shown on television, right? But it's going to be like... I'm wearing this T-shirt, for example, because of this, this, and that. Okay. And that's why it's stylish to me. You see what I'm saying? You see? Yeah, it? yeah, and yeah. And then I you're like, gonna have I like that, right? And people are gonna message you and, and send you pies and videos, even share it, and that's gonna change the game, brother. I think we're changing already, but we gotta make it happen. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a homework. homework. But that's a little, little, you know, say a little challenge. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I'm up for the challenge. As you know, uh, with with challenges for the for our viewers, uh, David, yesterday in our haircut, he challenged me. Um, I have a little routine of of uh, running three miles, uh, and he's a you know um, his he has his history with with cross country and running, etc. And he's doing really good things in this Las Vegas community with with people who, who love to run. He challenged me uh, to run my three miles, which I, takes me 30 minutes to do. I run it very slow. Uh, he challenged me to run it in, two, in 20 minutes. So take 10 minutes off of my natural root, routine pace. And I tried yesterday and with all transparency, you know, vulnerability, you got to be honest. And obviously me, just me being open. I tried yesterday and I sent him the proof that I failed. I did it in 22 minutes. 
Um, and I think it was 19 seconds or something, but, um, uh, this challenge with the outfit and the meaning and, 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 and explaining why it's stylish, I'm up for that challenge because I'll say it like this, being up for a, a, a challenge that opens you up to good things is really good because by accepting that challenge, you end up doing things not only for yourself, but for other people that. You probably would have never done like me accepting your challenge had me run my time almost 10 minutes faster uh, than I, I always do it. Because when I say 30 minutes, it's a loose 30 minutes, because sometimes that 30 minutes is 32, 33, 36, 37 minutes. You get what I'm saying? But it's usually when I leave the door, I look at the clock. If it's 10, usually by 1030, I'm there. 1035, 1028. You get what I'm trying to say? So um, accepting that challenge has done good. Uh, did good for me yesterday. And so for this one, um, I will accept. I am going to need a little bit of your help. Send me some information when we get done with our podcast here on how I can start my TikTok. I will tell all of you viewers that if you um, search me on social media, um, this is another response to all of to all of you. When my father passed away, um, I got internal. It, it it gave me so much strength and so much inspiration to be a better to be a better human being, um, physically, uh, spiritually, physically, emotionally, um, financially. That I turned inward. I didn't log in and connect to the media to try and find that value and that meaning for myself. I went inward and it created so much content um, and, and things in my life that are not shown on social media that I say to the viewers, doesn't always have to be. You get what I'm trying to say? But for this challenge, I will. So, David, would you be willing to are you going to you going to set me up when we get done here on, on how I can start that account? Oh, uh, right. I got okay. you. Okay, yeah, I yeah, got don't you. Worry, don't worry, don't worry. You 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 were the gangster right here, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got you on the challenge as long as you got me with the tools to set I me up. I got you. I got you, bro. You know the reason why I push people is because when I was young and I didn't have a father growing up, I felt that that in my life that I look up to to this day as a father figure, they push me. Because they felt like I didn't care, I wouldn't push you to success. So when I give you these That's challenges, just... right, for running, for the TikTok, I'm not doing it, you know, just to be tough. I do it because I care. If I didn't get um, there's a saying, your friends tell you what you want to want and your real friends tell you what you need to hear. So if I'm not going to be real with you, what's supposed to you know, and I, mm -hmm. I, I'm doing it because I care. And, and I see, I see you got that, you got that light that I'm going to help you make it shine, you know, and I know God's going to help. He's going to, he's going to make it moving. And, and I felt that I had to share this with you. And, and like I said, I don't do this for everybody. I, I'm very particular who am I going to, to pass like my, um, I guess my my worth or my energy channel my your influence. Yeah, there you go. Thank yeah. you, bro. I was kind of, I got a little stuck. There's a lot of signals flying. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I lost connection. I lost connection. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's that's the truth, man. And I'm really happy for you. And I'm gonna tell you, man. Even though you didn't have done the 20 minutes, you didn't make the 20 minutes. Look at the bright side. You did it in 22 minutes which means you're two minutes away from your goal. So I feel like you're going to get there. And that moment that happens, bro, I know you're going to send me a message, a screenshot to show me you actually did see. I'm going to be so proud of you. And I'm going to say, look at that. You did it. And, and I, and I'm, I'm very happy, man. Like, I feel like don't lose it. Keep it up. Like I yeah. said, you got, you got that light. Yeah. You know, don't, don't turn it off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't turn it off. I know you got double A batteries, but you well, know what I'm saying? Well, 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 thank you. Well, thank you, man. I uh, uh and I just want to say this as we're you know 
approaching the end of this uh, this great conversation that we're having to all the viewers. You know, I will tell you guys this, that like it is it, it's a it's an honor to be able to have and share this platform with you guys. I'm definitely not qualified to be to be a guest on this show in terms of the social media influence or followers or um, channels and TikToks and uh, Instagram. I'm actually a young man who's somewhat connected because I have, you know, I know of social media and I have a, a smartphone, a great invention like this, but in terms of, I'm way behind when it comes to, to that stuff. So I don't qualify in that realm, but I know I qualify in terms of the love realm, the self-love realm, the spiritual realm, the happiness realm. I'm super happy right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, the, the marriage realm, the fatherhood realm. So I qualify in that, in the sense of style realm, like knowing my gift realm, being able to love and be open to other human beings realm. Like I live, I, I, I'm super, super happy person. And so if you're living a life and if you have the, the barriers of stress, and depression and anxiety, um, I've overcome that, and so that's why I'm com that's that's how I'm coming at you. So thank you guys for definitely for your time. But um, David, I thank you for um, the kind words of you say that I do have a light. I feel it. I believe it. I I, I I live it. And so thank you for allowing this light to be. Um, thanks for bouncing the mirror off of it to sh allow it to shine in multiple directions, brother. Of course, man, of course. And, and guys, you have it. This is uh, the outlet to reality to hold this podcast in Vegas and Chicago every Tuesday. Get to like and Santa Maria and 805, stand up. What's <laughs> <laughs> and fans, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Cha-ching! Y'all know where to find it. I'm on IG, Facebook, uh, the Outlet to Reality, uh, also Spotify, Apple Music, and my TikTok is at Yakov28. Snapchat, take one, pass it. And my brother, where can my fans find you on on uh, social media? So right now, I'm only active. I'm actually not even active. I'll tell you all this. My my uh, my IG is Swagacy. Right. So it's my first name, which is Agassi, but I put S uh, M. I flipped the M to, to a W to make it swag, swagacy, if that makes sense. So that's my so IG is where I function. But I will tell you guys this. Like I said, at the moment my father passed away, I haven't posted any like official posts of me putting a post out there. It's been over a year, but I'm active in terms of staying in tune with uh those that are close to me who keep my creative inspirations flowing i'm i still follow the people who who give great content like david i'm still following the podcasts and i'm connected in that sense but in terms of if you're going to judge me by how much posts i do and followers that ain't me but if you're going to judge me by the quality of life and love and light that i bring i'm super active in that sense so ig don't have the TikTok. I will have it. Uh, and David, you have my word on that. Um, but yeah, that's it. I, I experienced with trying to learn how to do a little bit of a YouTube. You know, I had this thing called Saturdays with Swagacy that I experimented just to try. But yeah, Swagacy is what I am on social media. Perfect, brother. Thank you, guys.